Hello, hello, it's Stamplet here. Welcome to part 13 of 25 of the College Entrance Test Review. Credit to the Review Masters for providing me with these items. To continue, item 49, Mark Kagiyowa scored an average of 29 for his first three games and an average of 32 for his next four games. Then his average so far is about or approximately equal to one of these four values. So, Note that there are total of seven. There's a total of seven games because the first three and the next four that gives a total of seven. So in each game, there's a corresponding score, but the scores are not. But the scores are not given. However, we're given with the average of some of the games. So underlined in yellow, the average of twenty nine for his first three games. I can write it as a plus b plus c over three. The average of the first three scores, as seen here. So it's equal to twenty nine. And I can rewrite this as follows. So I can write that a plus b plus c equals 29 times 3. 29 times 3. And 29 times 3, that gives me 87. So I'm going to write 87. So um, we'll, be, we'll, be ha we'll be having that a plus b plus c equals 87. And by similar logic, we're going to get that d plus e plus f plus g equals 32 times 4. And 32 times 4 is equal to, uh, whoops, it's equal to 128. So I'm going to write 128. Now, note that the average of all his scores would be equal to simply a plus b plus c plus d plus e plus f plus g all over 7. And what's nice about this is that we can get this value because note that a plus b plus c is 87 from the average of the first three games and then d plus e plus f plus g, that's equal to 128 from the average of the first four games. So we can actually get the average. It's equal to 87 plus 128. That's going to give you a total of 215 divided by 7. Now, this is not 215 is not divisible by 7, so we want to get the approximation to one of these four. So let's try to convert this to a mixed fraction so we can see. So we'll ask ourselves the question, how many times does 7 go into 215? So we're just going to perform division. So 215 divided by 7, now 21 divided by 7, uh, we'll be able to get 3. So 3 times 7, that's 21, we subtract, bring down the next digit, which is just 5. But 5 is not, uh, 5 will never go in, sorry, 7 will never go into 5, so we're just going to write 0. So 215, it's, when divided by 7, it's 30 with a remainder of 5. So I can write this in mixed fraction as 30 and 5 over 7. Now comparing uh, 30 and 5 over 7, it's closer to 31 than it is to 30 because 5 7 is closer to 1 than 0. So 30, oh, 30 and 5 over 7, that's approximately 31. So out of the four choices, we have the most appropriate approximation to be 31. Next, Ning is 8 years younger than her brother Michael. 28 years ago, she was half as old as Michael. How old is Michael now? Now, you don't have to be that organized like what I did here, but it's very nice for you to at least know that what we need is, what we need are two sets of ages, ages in the present time and ages 20, uh, their ages 28 years ago. Now, we would assign variables. Now, generally assign variables that represent something. So, we want to get the age of Michael. So, let's just make the age of Michael equal to M, M for Michael. Now, Ning is 8 years younger than her brother Michael. So if Michael is M years old, Ning is younger, so we're going to subtract 8 years. So Ning should be M minus 8 years old. Now, 28 years ago, we would only subtract 28 to both of these. So M minus 8, and then we're going to subtract 28. So technically, this is equal to M minus 36. So I'm just going to write M minus 36. And then 28 years ago, Michael would obviously be M minus 28 years old. So we would use this sentence, 28 years ago, she was half as old as Michael. So 28 years ago, Ning is half as old as Michael. So the age or the number M minus 36, so this is the age of Ning, should be half of the age of Michael, so this number, so m minus 36 should be one half of m minus 28. And all we have to do is just solve for m. 
Now let's multiply both sides by 2 to remove uh, the 2 here. So multiplying both sides by 2, I'll be getting that 2m, 2m minus 72. That's going to be equal to m minus 28. And then we have just solve for m. So let's uh, subtract m on both sides. Bring the m to this side. It's going to be minus m. So I'll be getting 2m minus m. And then the negative 72, let's bring it to the other side. So it's going to become plus 72. So just solve for m. m equals negative 28 plus 72. That's equal to 44. So m equals 44. So how old is Michael now? It's already represented by our variable. So m here must equal 44. So it's choice A. Right in 51, if the triangle below is an isosceles triangle with A as the vertex angle, so if A is the vertex angle, it means that it's the angle where the two congruent sides meet. Since in an isosceles triangle, there's a pair of sides that, it, that is congruent. So these two sides meet at uh, this vertex, so it's called the vertex angle. So which set of numbers could be the values of A, B, and C respectively? Now, if A is the vertex angle, the other two angles are called the base angle. So by the isosceles triangle theorem, these two angles, B and C, should be the same. So just from the fact that you know that these two numbers should be the same, you can already cross out choice C and choice B. And then A and B both seem possible, but we have to check for the condition that since it's a triangle, we should have the, ang the sum of the angles, so angle A plus angle B plus angle C, that equals 180. So just check a and D, so let's try to check A, so it's 50 plus 65 plus 65. Well, 65 plus 65, that's 130, so we're getting 50 plus 130, so that's equal to 180. So choice A doesn't seem have to have any problems. Now let's try to check choice D, 70 plus 60 plus 60. 60 plus 60, that's 120. Now 70 plus 120, that's equal to 190. So here's the problem, so we know that D here wouldn't make up a triangle. So again, by cancellation, by elimination, we would be able to get that choice A is the answer. Right in 52, what is the area of a square inscribed in a circle having a diameter of 4 centimeters? So uh, there are no figures given initially, but take note of the word here, uh, inscribed. When we say something is inscribed in another, in another figure, we just say that one figure is written inside. So square is inside a rectangle. So that's uh, just the meaning of that. So we ha here we have a square drawn inside a circle. So this will be the figure. So the circle has a diameter of 4 centimeters. So we have 4 centimeters here. So what is the area of the square? Now, it is very important to know that a square has 4 right angles. Now, if a square has 4 right angles, then... We would form a right triangle here, as you can see, highlighted here. So if we have a right triangle and we have uh, side lengths, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem here. We would get that s squared plus s squared should equal hypotenuse squared, so equals 4 squared. So we'll be able to get that 2s squared equals... 4 squared is 16, and then s squared will equal to 8. Now, we can, we can always solve for s, and s is equal to 2 square root 2. We can always do that. But since we're asked to get the area of the square, which is s squared, we don't really need to, we, we don't really need to get the side anymore, since we're just focusing on the value of s squared. Now, since s squared equals 8, we already have the value of 8, so it's, eight gonna be, it's going to be 8 square centimeters. So that's that. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this video, and I'll see you in part 14. Bye-bye!